Hey guys, a couple of weeks ago I put a post on Facebook on the Off-Road and Expedition Trailers Facebook page of a build I've just completed of my off-road trailer. Now in the photos and in some of the video, sitting in the background was my 80 series cruiser. Um, had a bit of interest from a few guys wanting to know a little bit about it and have a bit better look at it. So we'll do a quick wander around and, and show you some of the features. Now, hard to believe, but it actually started out factory wagon. It was a white vehicle, a white GXL vehicle, turbo diesel, eight seater wagon. But you can see just behind the rear door there, we've um, run a saws all through the body, cut the back off and tossed it away. Welded in a rear wall, put in a rear window and filled the wheel arches in to make a little, little tool component. Now. We'll wander over. And you can see on this panel here, the rear window comes to sort of this part here. So what we've done, we've taken the windows out either side, cut straight through the body, welded this panel in to fill that window in, welded it all up, rear wall, rear vent, rear window, and made it a dual cap. Now, just down here, you can see this line here. Well, that's the old wheel arch. This is originally where the wheel used to sit in this section. Um, once we did the chassis extension, we then filled these wheel wells in, put a door on them, and made them into a little, little storage hatch. I've got recovery gear in this side, and all my ratchet straps and rope and bits and pieces in the other. Now, like I said, this is where the wheel was, and now you can see this is where the wheel is. What we did, we cut the chassis, and added 650 mil into it, or for you guys in the US, two foot two inches. Um, we re-welded the chassis, strengthened it all up, made a new drive shaft for it, extended the exhaust, extended brake lines, fuel lines, and the handbrake cable, and made everything all functional again. Now, when you look at it, it looks like it was meant to be. Um, it's hard to believe that it was a wagon. Now up on top of the, the canopy you can see a super peg awning, that's a 270 degree awning. And then up on the front, up on this rack, up on the cab, are my solar panels. They're permanently mounted there, feeding the deep cycle batteries. So what we've got power wise, we've got two 120 watt solar panels, We've got two 120 amp hour AGM deep cycle batteries. I've got two water tanks um, with a combined volume of 140 litres, which is also on a pressure pump. And underneath the back, there's a there's a tap either side. So you flick the um, the main switch on for the taps, and when you turn the taps on, the pressure pump kicks in and you've got mains pressure water out of your water tanks. Um, this has a 60 litre fridge inside and everything you possibly need for a weekend away. Now, you can see underneath, just behind the rear wheel there, is a aluminium toolbox. Now, there's one of these either side behind the rear wheel. This one has got my airline, my air truck, an air blower, my tire deflating, gear and spare belts, hoses, you know, just bits and pieces that you will need or could possibly need while you're out and about. But also up in the roof of the box, which might be a little bit hard to see, oh no, there we go, is an ARB twin head air compressor. Now this air compressor feeds a 16 litre air tank which is mounted up between the chassis rails and that in turn is plumbed through just in front of the wheel here and there's one of these on both sides is a quick release air fitting so we can plug the airline in there air up after we've come off the beach or when we've been on the trail or we can even run a rail gun if we need to if we want to change the um a flat tire or something like that now we wander around the back you can see we've got another toolbox here mounted on the back of the canopy this is the chainsaw box. Now in there, 
10 inch chainsaw, 4 litres of fuel, can of WD-40, bar oil, safety glasses, gloves and everything you need. Uh, you know, all the tools for adjusting the saw, for resharpening the saw. Now this is handy, this lives permanently on the back of the vehicle. It's always locked so that no one can steal it. But you know, when you're out on the track, you know, you come across a fallen tree, grab the saw, knock it into a few pieces and get rid of it. Or if you're camped, run out to the scrub, cut yourself a bit of firewood. Much easier than swinging an ax. You can see aluminium ladder which gets up onto the roof. We got a full length aluminium roof rack up there to, to store stuff on. I normally throw my kayak up there or the stand up paddle board. Um, beside the ladder there, we've got a full time rear view camera. Now this camera um, comes on when obviously when you turn the ignition on the camera comes on. But it also has a feature where if you switch flick a switch on the dash, that camera rotates and puts down at the points down towards your tow hitch. Now that allows me to reverse up to my trailers, whether it be boat, box trailer or my camper trailer, without actually getting out of the vehicle. I can put the tow balls perfectly in line. Right over beside that, rear mounted spare wheel. And below that, we've got this roll out drawer. Now this roll out drawer has a lid on top. Um, so, you know, we get to somewhere, we spin the awning around, the awning comes right around and covers this area. Set the gas barbie up on here, and we've got a little table where we can cook at. Now if I lift this, if I lift this lid up, you can see I've got that big drawer there for storage. At the moment, it's only got my little gas burners in there and the hot plate, but there's plenty of room for more stuff. And that rolls away, fully sealed. No water or dirt can get into it. Around to the driver's side, once again you can see there's another toolbox behind the wheel. And if we just pop the lid open and have a sticky beak. Okay, so there's the lid. The door is now open. It's above my head and it gives me a bit of shade when we're out. Mounted to that door, you can see there, brush saw, tomahawk, axe and a shovel. Permanently mounted. They live in the vehicle. I know where they are at all times. You can also see just there, fire extinguisher. Across the other side, another one. Mounted up in the roof. They're up there, they're out of the road. I know where they are. So if there's an emergency and you need the extinguisher in a hurry, you know exactly where they are. Um, so, and it doesn't matter which side of the vehicle you're on, it's within easy reach. You can see there, bug spray, a little pouch with some tools in it, a bit of sunscreen. And now this is basically just a storage side. So when we go away on a trip, all the bits and pieces go in here. You know, the camp chairs, bags of firewood if we've got to go to a place where we need to carry our own fire and, and so forth. You can see this section, this little panel here. In behind that is one of my AGMs. So because they're AGM, you don't need to check them all the time for water and that. So it's, it's, um out of the way. Got a 12 volt socket here. Now my fridge, my second fridge plugs into that. When we're doing an extended trip, I can put my 40 litre angle fridge in there, plug it in, and that then becomes our deep freeze. We keep all our meat and stuff in there. Um, we can freeze whatever, make ice, whatever we want. So if we went around to the draw to the sorry to the passenger side and open the door. This is the side that's got all the all the stuff in it. There we go. It's got the full kitchen with all the appliances, um, 60 litre angle fridge. And once again, mounted up in the door, I've got my fishing rods. Now, all aluminium construction, all done in marine carpet. You can see they're all aluminium. And also, they run on this nylon slide. I could have used draw runners when I built these but there's nothing to fail. They slide in and out beautifully, and you know, you're rattling around, there's nothing to go rusty and nothing to fail. Sometimes the, your standard drawer slides can fail, the bearings seize up and fall out. This way, can't possibly. This is the pantry drawer. Got our foil, paper towel, um, bits and pieces, plastic containers and stuff that, that you need when you when you're cooking a feed. You can see above that, 
I've got the 12 volt travel buddy, which is a 12 volt oven. Awesome for warming your lunch or keeping your lunch warm. Or when you're cooking your dinner, you throw a frozen apple pie in there while you cook your dinner. As soon as your dinner's finished, your apple pie is ready to go. Move along, 60 litre angle fridge on a drop down fridge slide. Now I'll demonstrate that in a second. Bottom drawer, cutlery. This has got all our knives and forks, all our cooking utensils, pepper, salt, coffee, sugar, and all that sort of stuff, all in that drawer. And the top drawer's got all our pots and pans, and our plates and cups, and, and all that sort of stuff. Once again, same construction, all aluminium on nylon slides. And you can see the thing slides so easy. Next little drawer, this is just a trash drawer really. This has got stubby coolers, what you guys in the US call them koozies. Um, I was quite surprised to hear that name, but that's what you guys call it. Uh, it's got gaffer tape, zip ties, you know, just odds and sods that you may need. Below that, I've got twin USB, so I can charge my iPhone, my iPad, bits and pieces, two 12 volt outlets in case we need to run some sort of 12 volt appliance. Now this little screen here is a new system I've just fitted and I haven't actually wired it up yet, but it's a battery monitoring system and that'll tell me what solar power has been put in, what 12 volt um, alternator power has been put in, what, how long to flat, how long to full. What, I can isolate all the appliances that I'm using, it'll tell me exactly what current draw yet to be wired up but it is installed and below that we've got a flush mounted 2000 watt inverter to run our 240 volt appliances now if i just spin this camera around i'll let you have a look at this side there you go that's the power control now you'll see there we've got a fuse box so everything is individually fused, everything is individually switched. Now, I don't know whether you can make it there, but you can see all those rocker switches. Below that is the Red Arc DC to DC charger. Now that just controls the power coming out of your alternator or out of your solar panels into your battery. When your vehicle's running, it charges the batteries off the alternator. As soon as you switch the vehicle off, it automatically switches over to the solar and charges those batteries. And it also isolates your start, start battery so that if you're using appliances, you're not drawing power off your start battery. So you've always got a freshly charged start battery. Beside that, I've got another little charger. This fella here, a little Nightcore, that does triple A's, double A's, 18650s, and C size batteries. So these two batteries here are actually for this LED torch that I've got mounted up in the roof. There's usually two sitting there, but I've got one inside in the shed where I've been using it. Above that, a little 12 volt charger for my Canon. I'm a bit of a keen photographer. I've got myself a good Canon camera, and that's the 12 volt charger for that for the battery. Um, this box, all the business happens inside, and it's all hidden away, kept nice and neat. Now. We'll just run this around, and this is going to be a bit hard to do one-handed, but that's a 60 litre fridge. It's on a, I don't know if you can see that, an MSA 4x4 drop-down fridge slide. So, we unlock it, push the button. Like I said, it's going to be a bit hard one-handed. Pull the handle down. Now this bridge will come out and drop down. Now it's at a height where I can easily get into it. I don't have to have a stool to look into. You know, the last thing you want to do is have your missus fall off a milk crate while she's trying to get you a cold beer while you're camping. Nah, just kidding. Makes life so much easier. So once again, we pull the handle, the fridge lifts up. We push the lock button. She slides away. Right, oh, that's about it. Um, let me know what you think. I love the vehicle. It's awesome out on the trails. 
The only thing now I need to do is spend more time sitting in the driver's seat and get out there and use it. So, let's get it done and get it dirty. See ya.